Welcome to Cityscape on City TV. My name is Apioko and I'm here with it. Queen Emma. <laughs> really? I told you, I'm a queen. Not a queen. I am a queen. Why? Right, because your hair is looking nice. You think you're a queen Finish. or some kind of royal. I am anyway, royal. anyway, today we're talking about sexual harassment in the workplace. So we've come to the Labadi Beach Hotel. We're just chilling after work today. We got off work a little early, and we thought, you know what? These days we're having so many conversations with so many different people in person, on social media, in church and beyond about sexual harassment in the workplace. So we thought, why not get into the conversation? So stick with us. Once again, my name is Apioko and this is Queen MFA. MFA. And we're talking sexual harassment in the workplace on Cityscape right here on City TV. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Cityscape on City TV. Once again, my name is Apioko, the one and only. And, and once again, I am Her Royal Highness, Queen Emma. Thank you very much. What a waste of airtime, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about yourself like that. <laughs> but, but once again, we're talking about sexual harassment in the workplace. And I did say that the conversations this week, MFA and in recent times have been about sexual harassment in the mm -hmm. workplace and indeed not just with our friends and companions in Ghana beyond but I, I really want us to focus you know about sexual harassment in Ghana, in Ghana. Yep. okay and um, for starters to put this conversation into context I want us to define what sexual harassment is mm -hmm. and I'd like you to take it from a legal perspective Miss Lawyer oh okay what, okay what, what okay do, okay what do Ghana let, 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 let me let at? me gather my my notes on, on, on law, you know I always have them handy. Yeah, she's opening the rule book, <laughs> you know, the, the book of statutes. Um, you know what? But, but what do our statutes say about sexual harassment? Do you know what's what interesting? It? There aren't any laws specific to sexual harassment in Ghana. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. And not surprising. No law that talks <laughs> about sexual harassment specifically. Obviously there's the Labour Act, the Ghana Labour Act, which is there to protect employers and employees. And it touches on sexual harassment. And it, it interprets sexual harassment as part of another legal okay, issue, right. unfortunately. So it talks about, oh, here it is. Um, it's any unwelcome or offensive or importunate sexual advances or requests made by an employer or a superior officer or a co-worker, whether the worker is a man or a woman. And this is under the interpretation, this is under section 175. And I found that rather interesting. Of, of which act or which code? Of, oh sorry, of the Ghana Labour Act. Okay, so this is within the Ghana Labour Act. This is within the Ghana Labour okay. Act, exactly. Great. And okay. it goes, it's between layers as well, whether you're a superior or between co-workers as well. Because a lot of people think that it's only when a superior, a superior right. comes on to someone who's um, not not inferior but below them in the right, rankings right, yeah right. and other laws also touch on sexual harassment and um, the the criminal code also okay. at, at 29 talks about indecent assault which could also be linked to sexual harassment i believe that's in section 103 is that it um and yes for anybody who wants to check yes right, section so the criminal 103 code. Act, um, Act 29, 29 section, section 103, 103, where it talks about indecent assaults. But that's more to do with um, penetration, carnal knowledge. That's more to do with the specific acts that are okay. of, a, of a sexual nature, okay. but not specific to the workplace, All right. if that makes right. any sense. Absolutely. Um, and also the Domestic Violence Act and obviously the Constitution, which goes further to protect our human rights. But it was just very interesting to see that no laws were very specific to sexual harassment or dealing with sexual harassment for that matter. Um, but yeah, I think that that's one of the major problems. And, and like I'm saying, I'm, I'm not surprised because on a daily basis we hear even, even rape people are getting away with it. Hmm. Let alone, I said something to you, I didn't think it was offensive in a hmm. sexual way. And so, who are you to tell me what I said yeah. was, was sexual harassment? 
Yeah, I think you know? because it's stated as sexual harassment and there isn't a clear definition as to what sexual harassment is, that poses a major problem that there is a huge gap because employers don't really know exactly what sexual harassment is. So they're all going based off their own opinions as to of, how of, to deal with the problem. Yeah. Okay, so now I want us to break it down. Um, Let's obviously, we're talking down. about I mean, sexual harassment can happen in your home, in school, um, but a place like this where we, we meet and, and have um, so, and some chill. sort of socialization with our friends, with our family members. Mm -hmm. But of course, today we're talking about sexual harassment in the workplace. Specifically, so yeah. as to where it can happen, it's very clear that it can happen anywhere in a house on the street. But of course, it can happen in the workplace mm -hmm. as well. Okay, including where you and I work in the spaces yeah. that we work. Okay, um, so that means across any industry. And I'm trying to break this down because I feel like a lot of our viewers might not understand that they might actually be sexually harassed every day. Yeah. Because you're you're not being raped. Nobody is. There's no um, you know carnal knowledge or penetration anywhere. Nothing that's explicitly sexual. And so you might feel as though you're actually not being sexual, sexu sexually harassed. Mm. You might be oblivious to it. And so that's why I'm trying to break it down. So it can happen in your workplace. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you've seen a few so of those cases, seen, haven't you? Seen or experienced. <laughs> Sorry for another day. You know. But um, you know what? I'm so grateful for, it's unfortunate, but I'm grateful for the rise of the Me Too movement and, this, and all the discourse on sexual harassment because... It's been going on for a very long time, sure. but we haven't been and all over the world and all over the world. And we've not had an opportunity to really articulate what it is that amounts to sexual harassment, because someone might make you feel uncomfortable and you might not necessarily know how to define what you're feeling. Okay. But I'm so glad that now we're, we're able to have the conversation to put it under the umbrella of sexual harassment. And I mean, going back to the conversation about sexual harassment in the workplace, People always think it has to happen in your office. Mm, mm. It doesn't always just have to happen in your office. It obviously that's the major point of call. Because when you talk about the workplace, you're you thinking think about a your roof, office, exactly, where your desk is, where your computer is, of, of your workplace. Yeah. yeah, but it also goes on at conferences, even wherever work is is being done at business meetings. A, a business meeting, for example, lunch, dinner, and, and also what the ILO points out that it doesn't necessarily happen in the workplace. It, it can also happen between colleagues, but outside the workplace because that is where your first point of interaction was. was so right. that is also workplace sexual harassment because it carries on into your yeah, workplace. Yeah, because if I didn't meet you in the office, I probably never would have been at that party mm -hmm. that our office made through with you. Exactly. I probably never would have met you and said hello at La Badi Beach Hotel. Yeah. You know, and then like it that. carries on into your your day to day lives. So okay. um, yeah, I'm so glad we're able to, to define that. But Absolutely. what is sexual harassment? Good. See what amounts to that. See, and this is a really huge thing for me across a, 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 the, the wide spectrum of, of the career space. Okay. And somebody says, oh, I want a hug. And you say, no, I don't like giving people hugs. <laughs> oh, we are too Story more. of my life. Ah. Story oh, of boy. my life. You know, you, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't feel like giving you a hug. My, and I, I keep saying this. We spoke about this again when we, we, talk, we talked about um, having the sex talk, doing mm -hmm. sex education with your kids. And I told you that over and over again when I was growing up, my mom used to tell us, your body belongs to you. And she would say, repeat it after me. My body belongs to me. Even if mommy and daddy are touching you in a way that makes you feel remotely uncomfortable, Just you have the right up. to say, I'm uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So if we're in the workplace, I don't know you. We didn't come from the same house. You don't feed me. You're not the one paying my, well, in some cases we talk about paying salary, but I'm just speaking on a daily basis when you're having general interactions with the people you work with who are probably on the same tier as you mm -hmm. uh, as far as the, 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 the ladder is concerned, the corporate ladder is concerned. I want a hug. I don't feel like giving you a hug. Then you get upset. Listen, I can totally relate to that because yeah. that actually happened to me. Or, or I'm walking by and then a group of guys are sitting down and I pass and you know for a fact that they're talking about your bum. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't really happen to me, but you know. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you don't have much of a bum, yeah, I'm no, sorry. Really. But yeah, I, I, I mean. But all the best, <laughs> but things like that happen. Yeah. You know, and then some people will take it the extra mile and start passing comments. 
oh, eh, you dear, eh, eh, the way you've dressed, they are worrying yeah, us. So, I, you know, I, yeah, things like I, that. I, I really don't agree you with know, that. And I feel that if, and, and, and I'll say this especially to the men, if you feel that there's a female colleague of yours, right, who dresses in a way that constantly throws you off, then you might want to say to a, your HR, it's not a place to go and tell her every day are harassing us with your clothing. Mm-hmm. No. Because that's also, in a way, and it's very murky, but it could be sexual harassment. Some women actually dress to set their, their male colleagues up. Fair you enough. You know what I'm but talking about. But fair enough, but then there are also women who are just dressing to mind their own business. You understand. But if you feel like you're being harassed, so to speak, speak to your HR. It's not your place to go and tell the woman, don't dress this way, your bum is yeah. in my face. You know, but I mean, I mean, we'll come to that. Let, let's take a short break and we'll come back. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cityscape on City TV, and we're talking about sexual harassment in the workplace. We'll be right back. We spice up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Those security guys who were supposed to protect them. Mm-hmm. I'm sure by now somebody must have, done, have all of them arrested. Mm-hmm. They must all be arrested because it's an unprovoked attack. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for Breakfast Daily, only on City TV. Welcome back to Cityscape on City TV, and my name is Apioko, the one and only, and I'm here with Her it. Royal Highness <laughs> Queen Emma. With it. With this, this is harassment. With that. <laughs> I have a name. We're talking about sexual harassment, in case you just tuned in. Sexual harassment specific to the workplace, and we've said a number of things. we said that it doesn't just have to happen within the four corners of your of office. Of your office, yep. Okay. Um, if you're at a conference, with your colleagues and something of the nature happens, it's sexual harassment mm-hmm. in the workplace. If you meet up for a social event, like how we're chilling. Or you bump into you someone at a social event and it spills over yes. into your workplace, that's also sexual harassment. Yeah, the and then we've been yeah. speaking a little bit about what constitutes sexual harassment. So somebody saying, I want to give you a hug, you reject it, the person gets upset. Mm-hmm. Somebody says something to you that you feel, um, that makes you feel uncomfortable because it's of a sexual nature. It's some sexual innuendo, all that constitutes sexual harassment. And MFA took us through a few of the statutes of Ghana that, um, you, you know, sort of talk about sexual harassment. The Labor Act, yeah, we also look at the criminal code. code, okay? Yeah. But I just want to um, finalize it by saying that um, we are very communal people, you know, so we like to believe, you know, so we like to believe. So. It, sometimes, Dropping all these truth bombs today up your know, car. But, but it's true. So we like to believe. We, we say we're a communal society. And again, a conversation for another day. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when it matters the most, we're not. But we say we're a very communal society. But we are a very communal society. And so because of that, certain things like, oh, you meet your boss on the staircase and then he or she gives you a hug. It's okay. But we should be mindful of red flags. Mm-hmm. If somebody is lingering, gives you a hug and it's still holding on to your waist and it's slipping the hand is slipping a little yeah. lower somebody is holding your hand exactly. for a little Someone's too long Someone's holding your hand for a little too long asking you, know. you to come visit them at home on weekends and things when like that when that shouldn't be the case when you have no business to discuss and then gets upset when you don't all these little things constitute sexual harassment especially if it makes you feel uncomfortable it makes you question the act or the the suggestion mm-hmm. okay and then um, I, I think we just need to be very careful about some of these things because yes. our culture in itself breeds sexual harassment in the workplace especially. And then lastly, um, should we be talking more about it? Oh, Emma? definitely. <laughs> De- no. We don't talk about it enough because there's so many grey areas. I mean, I'm sure some people don't know that rubbing someone's shoulders or touching their waist or holding their hand for too long when you're really not that close I'm sure that a lot of people is a form of sexual harassment. Didn't realize that. Yeah, I think we really need to, you know, talk about it and talk about different experiences and different instances where sexual harassment is prevalent. So yeah, I think we should be having this conversation all the time and about how to handle it. No means no. Saying it to the person's face, maybe coming up a bit aggressive, I don't know, that's that's how I deal with it. 
And I always make sure people understand that I have a bubble. I don't care who you are, male or female. I don't like to be touched unnecessarily. I always say to people, my ears work just fine. You don't have to touch me to get my attention. And people might find that as rude, but I'm just protecting my space and protecting myself. Yeah, because so, we're your rights and someone else's beginning. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, we, we, we're, we're going to move on. Um, but I just want to say that sexual harassment has caused terrible, terrible psychological issues for people. There are people who go to work every day and are unhappy, not because they don't enjoy their jobs or they don't like the people they work with, but because they're being sexually harassed and yeah. they don't know how to talk about it, which is the reason why we need to be talking about it. People need to understand that they're not the only ones going through it, and so it's something that needs to be discussed. It's something that we need to be putting at some point to Parliament. Mm -hmm. So we, we can be passing more sexual harassment specific laws and statutes that can protect each and every one of us. And, yeah. and, and lastly, I will say that if you are being sexually harassed, perhaps you're hearing what we're saying today, you're going to read more about it, and you realize that, oh snap, all this while I've been sexually harassed and I need to do something about it. Please speak to a psychologist, a therapist, you can reach out to us on any of our social media handles. It's City TV GH, um, MFI and I both on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Just make sure you get some help, you get audience, and you address the problem so that it doesn't become something deeper for you. Um, you're still watching Cityscape on City TV. The show continues. What are your opinions? Join the conversation on social media with the hashtags Cityscape and Myscape and via the handle at CityscapeGH as well on Instagram. Live music, interviews, poetry, and more with your favorite personalities. Be our guest on Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. for the most exciting moments on TV. Join Kojua Kotoboating for real entertainment right in your living room. Saturday Live on City TV and City 97.3 FM. Now let's find out what's new in the city. Restaurants and great and food. Bars. Yeah, I'm a fan. Those are my favorite. Yeah, drunky. Yeah, I just had to. <laughs> <laughs> but we're at the around the Labadi police station. So in a Labadi location. Very cooded. Very cooded. I'm veggie. Ha, you know. <laughs> and there's this wall behind us. And um, you know, in one of our episodes, we we talk about personal style in Deaf Art Studios, and we told you that Deaf is an amazing graffiti artist. So today we're here to experience. The graffiti. We'll be getting Amazing. into it with him. him no, no, it's, so it's crazy. But, like, yeah. just look at that. Just look at that. Just look at that. Just look at that. Death. 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 Can we try? Yeah, you can try. Okay, so what should, what should we do? Okay. You see, I'm blending. Yes. I blend this color and this color together. Yeah. Kind of like so, makeup. Yeah. Yes. Kind of like yes. So I blend it together. So when I get here, I make sure it's framed. You understand? No, okay. it's all in the red. Yes. So it can blend to this. Okay. Uh -huh. So. So you blend. Okay. And then keep pressing this step pressing. Better. Better. Oh, Do you know why it's coming deep? Yes. Because it it has a different oh, tip. This has a different tip. Oh wow! Listen, it's different. Oh, guys, look at this. So, so, so basically, it's gone. So I can I can take it off and swap. It depends on how I want this oh, to come. Oh, that is amazing. Yeah. That is so cool. So this different. This different. But I went to be really fast. Yeah. This wall is commissioned, so police okay. will not get me. Oh, yeah, police oh, won't get me. Yeah, police won't get me. 
Yeah, so I mean, what, what goes into getting a commissioned wall? Hey, it's a lot of cash. Okay. Especially when it's on graffiti. It's a lot of cash. So you actually pay for it? Yeah, sometimes. Wow. Those who really understand art, they pay for it. And you know, art is life. Even if we move, it's art. How did you get started with um, it's, it's a gift from God. I was like, I was like this little boy coming on the street when I started art. Drawing with color pencils and paper. Yeah. My dad keep buying me stuff that will help me in art. And now I have grown into this. So your yeah, dad really went, supported you? I went to an art school for four years. I went to secondary school for three years. And all is art. Everything is art. Artist. I learned this on uh, YouTube. Why? What? You know what? When I, I got commissioned I can, I can show you my first graffiti. It was very, very rubbish. No, guys, I, he learned this on YouTube. On YouTube. He learned how to do graffiti on YouTube. And now he's getting walls commissioned. Maybe, maybe he didn't catch that bit of the conversation, you know. Graffiti is really fast because usually it's protest art, it's statement uh -huh. art. So you need to show before you spray. You know, the street or whatever yeah. to make um, statements as an artist. So a lot of the time, you need to be quick about it so yes. that the police doesn't come yes, and you. <laughs> but this is a commissioned wall. You see the tip? Paid for it. I make sure I buy spray cans according to the colors. Mm. And they are all there. I got a city colors. Oh, and they will be like, oh my god, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank oh, you. thank you so much. You're welcome. So I know Chris Brown, for example, has really taken graffiti art to newer heights, selling his work for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. I you mean, see, in America, they, they really love it. They enjoy it. But in Ghana, it takes someone it will take someone a whole time to appreciate art in Ghana. You understand? That is what I'm telling you. Everything we do is art. When we move, is art. Even if we talk, we wake up in the morning and we go like, ah, it's art. The feeling of art. Did you want to do a lot of work here in the body? Um, the walls are here, and then um, you know, the body. Labadi is a moving place. The best artist you can find in Accra is in Labadi. We have um, Sergio, we have Ram, that's uh, Rafael Ajitimi. We have Death, Death Art. We have um, Abwaji, we have Abwaji Art. And then we have uh, some, this Rasta guy, he's very good. And are these artists like, moving to higher heights like you are? Yes, as well? yes. It's now that um, people are loving what we do. Now that people ideas are coming into art, they call us for backgrounds, for music video, backgrounds in their room, backdrops, and their parties and weddings and stuff like that. The government should give us a chance to do artworks under our bridges and then the foreigners will come and go like, whoa, I saw this in Ghana, it's beautiful, let's go to Ghana and see artworks on the streets. If you go to Atomic Junction under the bridge, the posters are there like, like this, big like this. Keep posting and posting and posting. Even if we don't get paid, actually it will make Ghana beautiful. Ghana will be beautiful with art. That's it. segment on City TV and this is Cityscape and oh man like look look at this Listen. look at this Listen. this is everything death yeah. no you know when when we said we would come to you first to your studio and then come experience the art with you because we were look we did some of this we, look we our, our names are there we did some of this yeah. but you know when we started I didn't imagine it would look like this Explain this to us. Ah, that is graffiti. When you start, you will know. But when you keep going, and uh, the end part, 
you see how it is. It's so beautiful, it's so nice. This is amazing. And and I, I know on the other wall, just over there, mm -hmm. um, one of your colleagues is mm -hmm. doing a mural. Yeah. Um, guys, yeah. what it is, is it's Kung Fu Panda, right? Says. And he's kicking Tramadol. He's Kung Fu Tramadol out yeah. of Labadi. And this is a way to educate the youth of Labadi. And yeah. for me, this is what art is. It's about educating, it's about informing, entertaining to having fun, because this is a lot yeah, of fun. But at the same fun, time, but very you know, because right now what you've done is you've advertised City TV. Anybody who doesn't know that the City TV now knows no. it, and the City <laughs> Stable, and there's someone called Apiof or someone called MFR. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So what does it take to train someone to do uh, you, you, if, if you have the skills already, and um, uh, you need more, you need to train more, because art, you need to get close to someone who really knows much more than you do. Learn something from the person, and the person also learns something from you. That is art. So if you are you're an upcoming artist, you want to learn more, you can get close to someone who is good nearby you to teach you art. And, and Jeff, I'm looking at this bike right now. This is your work. Yeah, so that's not, my work. So graffiti is not just about walls, guys. I How use, long did it take you to do this? It, it took me three days in doing this. I know you have a strong message for the government. Ghanaian prisons are not beautiful. <laughs> we don't want to go there. We don't want to do like artwork under the bridges that the government will go like, I am going to arrest this boy for this. I will arrest this boy for this. No, we, we just want approval from them before we step in. And when we step in, they will see the difference between posters under bridges and artworks under bridges. That's right. And it's going to make Ghana beautiful. Yeah. It's going to make foreigners, it's going to allow foreigners to come, like they would like coming to Ghana. Charlie, artwork is beautiful. Government, please, we beg you guys. Just give us a chance to express ourselves. So we're appealing to our leaders, engage our artists. There's so much you can, I mean, look at this. It's, it's fabulous work from somebody made in Ghana. This can be the difference. So let's support our young people by giving them projects like beautifying the city. Dev, thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, we'll Dev, be thank back. you so much for allowing me to be a part of such beautiful art. I would never forget. Good, good students. Thank you. Good students. Cheers, 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 cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers MTN Spreaker. It's called MTN Spreaker. 94. 94. By Acrylex. Yeah. It's By, yeah. Acrylex is the only company that will bring this to Ghana. Cheers to my spray pan. <laughs> Hi, Apiofa here, I'm back again, and if you're the type of person who doesn't like to spend too much money on detergents but your toilet bowl is always dirty, this tip is for you. Get some Coke, some Coca-Cola, right? Pour it into your toilet bowl, leave it overnight in the morning, take any kind of soap you want, make some soapy water, pour it into the bowl, wash it down, and flush it clean. Easy peasy. So instead of drinking all the Coke in your fridge, pour it into your toilet bowl and have a clean toilet. This has been a Cityscape Life Hack from me to you. You're still watching Cityscape on City TV and what a packed show it's been. I know. Uh, what's, what, are, what, are, I mean, what have you learned today? What have but, I learned? Yeah. More like what I've imparted. But <laughs> honestly, we talked about the culture, patriarchy, <laughs> um, no means no, you know, being right in your face, being absolutely stern about sexual harassment, especially when it happens in the workplace. The other thing I'd like to add is that we're always talking about our economy not growing. Sexual harassment causes, it, it costs us money. Between 1992 and 1994, the US economy lost over 300 million because people were either quitting their jobs, falling in fit, or just non-performance at work. And it happens to you too. We, exactly. So aside from everything we've said about trying to qualify what sexual harassment is, you need to understand that it also costs money. So employers, if you think it's not a priority, it's costing you money as well. Oh, MFI speaks you know. wisdom for once. <laughs> and of course, we brought you the What's New segment. We, we, we taught you something new. Hack your life, you know? Something that makes your life a little bit easier. It's been an amazing show. And once again, I will say that we've been talking about sex sexual harassment in the workplace today. Sexual harassment in the workplace. And again, I'm saying to you, man, woman, whoever you are, if you're watching us and you feel as though you're being sexually harassed, get the help you need. Reach out to a psychologist, reach out to us. We can link you to someone who can help you. So at least you have a listening ear that can help you rise above this thing called sexual harassment.
that can break you forever and ever. So work and work happy is very important. And of course, this has been Cityscape on City TV. My name is Apioko. And I'm Queen Emma Fox. It's. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Yeah. <laughs>